Well, let's bring in Nigel Farage, who has joined me on the balcony. Nice to see you. Um, so they've all gone in there. She's looking for a, a statement of solidarity from the European leaders. She might be a little frustrated that the one person that's prevaricating is Donald Trump. Well, you may say Donald Trump, you may say Jean-Claude Juncker, you may say the Germans. Indeed, initially, the French government were very critical of Mrs May's rush to judgment. And don't forget that in Italy, you know, the two parties that succeeded in those elections, both are actually remarkably pro-Russian. And you could argue the same for the Greek government as well. So I've no doubt later uh, there'll be some big, strong statements about solidarity with Britain, and it's a terrible mistake to leave. But it's worth remembering, since we voted Brexit, the European Union has made it clear they want a foreign policy without member state veto, they want a full army, and they're still intent on eastward expansion. And I would want to hear Mrs May tonight say, you know, we value our European friends supporting us during a difficult time, but we are not going to be part of this European foreign policy. This is always a good example, though, isn't it? When you bring all the countries together, you get different interests. Of course, Greece, Italy, Germany have different mm. business interests with Russia. The Baltic states much more concerned about Russian interference. And yet, they do come together. Well, they do, because in the end, there's one spokesman that speaks for everybody. Um, and nobody, nobody at a summit like this wants to break ranks with everybody else. The truth is, there are great divisions within this European Union, and attitudes towards Russia are just one of them. Let's talk about Brexit because they will turn to that tomorrow and it's likely they'll green light the transition agreement which has been inked in green now. Can you live with the transition agreement? We didn't vote for transition. We voted to leave. Uh, we were told by David Cameron, Article 50 will, will get triggered the very next day. Now, we've learnt since that the civil service did no preparatory work, which maybe explains why it took nine months to trigger Article 50. But let's be clear, once that was triggered, that two-year period, that was the transition phase. So the fact that you know, this can has been kicked down the road for a further 21 months, months minimum, mm. I'm not very happy but with. But then those who support transition would say, look, better to expend the energy on the final deal, the prize for Brexiteers, rather than on a bespoke transition <laughs> deal. Let's just get that out of the way and focus on the real game. Well, if you follow that logic, uh, when we get to the end of that 21-month period, we'll be told, well, just another couple of years. You know, at some point, if you've made a decision to change direction, at some point, you've got to grasp the nettle and get on with it. OK. You were throwing haddock into the river yeah. yesterday, um, the fishing deal, they're only 0.05% oh, of British GDP. Oh, well, let's wipe them out then, shall we? So this would be the point that oh, you Oh, well, would... let's forget about... I tell you what, let's write off our coastal communities and let's make sure Goldman Sachs bankers are all we care about. I'm really tired of this argument. Look, symbolically, nothing represents sovereignty more than the reclamation of our territorial waters. And I genuinely believe that fishing is the acid test of Brexit. Big promises were made that when we left the European Union, we'd take back control of our waters. They haven't done it, and they're not even giving us assurances that, that at the end of a further 21 months, the concern this is, is going to The happen. concern is that it, the Treasury sea fishing is something to trade in exchange for financial services. It is the Treasury well, that's pushing this. In many ways, you're right. Of course, we sold fisheries out on the way into the European project. We're now selling fisheries out on the way out as well. OK. Let me ask you about one other thing. Delarue, company in Gateshead, has bid to print the new <laughs> yeah. British passport, the new blue British yeah. passport, uh, and some reports today suggesting it might be going to a Franco-Dutch firm. What do you have to say about yeah, that? Yeah, you see, under European Union procurement rules, we're supposed to treat other countries the same as our own. And the only country that does that is the United Kingdom. The French have insisted they print their own passports and they use security reasons for doing so. Again, we're talking about symbolism, about what Brexit represents. This should be being done by a British company. Nigel Farage, thanks for coming Thank to you. speak with us. Uh